Hello, and welcome to Zenata Consulting's Beginner Series. This week, we're covering Zoho Sign, and we're going to talk about sign forms. Uh, I'm Brett Martin. I'm Tyler Colt. All right, let's get right to it. So last, if you checked in on our last beginner series, we talked about how to do a template and we did a simple W9 template, showed you how to use that, how to send it out. Sign forms is one of those things that kind of makes it just a little bit easier to send forms out. And what this does is it actually gives a form to fill out that is gonna go ahead and complete the form. So really running down the left-hand side here, you're just gonna click on sign forms and then it's going to ask you to create a sign form. And so when you're creating a sign form, one thing that is important to note is that it's based on a template, right? So that first option is always going to be to choose a template. So, you know, step one is to make your template. Then you come over here to the sign form and you create a form to pre-fill out that template. So in this case, we'll go ahead and choose our W9. And we'll give this a name. You know, this would just be really an internal value. So, you know, W9 sign form or anything like that would be just fine. You can set a maximum number of responses on these. Um, that really is important because these sign forms consume automation or API credits. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're not gonna get a, a big push of junk traffic or anything that's gonna consume all of those. Um, so yeah. this is something that you might wanna consider. And you get a few each month. Um, you can buy additional API credits. They are 50 cents a piece. So if you're kind of running through this automation a lot, you're doing a lot of these, but uh, it, uh, on the other hand, the automation saves you well more than 50 cents, uh, but usually getting it done. So, and mm -hmm. that's quite frankly on the lower price of things, um, as far as, uh, if you look at other signed documents as well. And then the other thing you can do is you can enforce a one-time password. And if you're going to do that, then you can say, is it going to be by email or SMS? So what this is going to do is it's going to require that they do one of those two things, give an email and the one-time password is going to be emailed to them, or it's going to be SMS to them as well. Because mm -hmm. an important note is that they fill out this form and then they get emailed the link to actually sign it. It'll just have all of the data filled in. So you can use a one-time password to be a little bit more secure and ensure that the, the same person who filled out that form is the one who's gonna then sign once the email gets delivered. Yep, and then you can say whether or not it's going to be valid forever or if you're gonna select a certain end date. Most of the time when you're doing these signed forms, um, you know, you're gonna wanna usually put an end date on them as you were saying, Tyler, it's not only the maximum number of responses, but it's the credits and all the other things, but you can always come back in and edit it. Um, so we'll leave this one as forever having said that anyway, and then you go ahead and create. So as you can see, we have a sign form and it is completely active right now. And you've got various actions you can do this with. You can go ahead and get the URL that is associated with this. And once you get that, you can then go ahead and send that to the people who need to sign the form. So when a person goes ahead and they uh, drop, they get that link, this is what they see. They can go ahead and fill in their name and their email address and then go ahead and start signing the form. And now the form comes up for them to sign. And basically this is just another way of kind of authenticating as Tyler was saying, if you were to use the two-factor authentication to get that one-time password to do it, you would be verifying the person that's doing this. So another way kind of of getting this form out them for signature, you also can, if these, pro, if the business name or the full name had been coded properly, as we talked about, if you look at our previous session, it would have auto filled in some of these fields for them as well. But sign forms can be relatively powerful and uh, worth taking a look at. Alrighty, and so that will kind of end cap our little walkthrough here on these sign forms. Again, just kind of a useful way to provide another avenue for someone to request one of these documents to be sent out their way for signature. Thank you so much for watching our videos and tuning into our channel. We hope you found this useful. And if you did, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so that you get notified anytime we put out any new videos. Thanks again for watching.